the education side of it is there a danger we had a guest on a little bit earlier on who said that there is a danger that it could glamorize drugs if it's taught in the wrong way in schools how do you get the message across to children effectively i mean you're absolutely right yeah bad education can do real damage and um i remember back to my my childhood when i was 15 the only kind of drug education we had was you know, one off the policeman came in with a big suitcase of um of drugs opened it up showed them all to us now i grew up in a small fishing village in essex and i'd never seen any of these drugs before and it did have that effect of glamorizing what what we know works is um drug and alcohol education being a constant part of the syllabus and the curriculum throughout young people's lives and that whilst you whilst you're talking about uh, specific information around individual drugs you're coupling that with what we would call life skills but building self-confidence resilience giving them the support to know what to do like i say in those challenging moments when they might be offered drugs or they see their friends taking it and they're not quite sure whether they want to do it or not so it's about giving them the the skills in the classroom if you like that, that they can then replicate in real life situations to make sure that they're making the right choices and the healthy choices for them and why does it appear to be such an issue in stoke-on-trent do you think you lived here for a while yourself I did, and and it's interesting. I mean, it isn't just in in Stoke on Trent, but it is in towns and cities like Stoke on Trent. These old industrial towns and cities um, that have incredibly proud heritage, but are going through difficult economic times, um, where uh, you're seeing joblessness up, homelessness up. Uh, young people are struggling to see hope for their future. Uh, and it's interesting because we're also seeing it in, in towns like Wrexham in Blackpool as an example. Um, and again, it, it comes back to how do you also build hope and ambition and aspiration for young people so that they can see an alternative path for them. And just can I ask you a, a quick question here, Boris? Ian Inoka was devastated when he spoke to us yesterday, the trouble he's going through with his stepson. Is it, have you seen the recovery from drugs like monkey dust? Is it, is it easy? How, how quick is it for people to get the help they need and, and recover? I mean, I mean, first of all, yes, it is um, recoverable. Um, no, it's not easy. Um, and it requires high levels of intensive you know, therapy and support uh, from professionals and from families and, and friends around them and, and whole communities. Uh, my personal view is that that isn't accessible enough. And certainly you're, you're seeing youth mental health um, services under more and more kind of financial pressure across the country, which means that they're not, they can't get into young people or indeed adults um, until they've really hit crisis point. And what we know is that, like anything else, the earlier you can get to something, the easier it is to treat and to deal with. Um, and so until there's more money, more, more resources available in that space, that will always be a problem. OK. Thanks for speaking with us this morning. Appreciate your time. Boris Pomeroy is Chief Executive of Mental, working to prevent drug misuse among children and young people.